the sack of Rome by the Goths in the year 410 AD, one of the most important events in uh, European and world history. Well, one of the earliest records of uh, Alaric, the king of the Goths, capturing the city was uh, written by a Spanish Christian priest and uh, theologian by the name of Erosius, or uh, Paulus Erosius, as he was later called. It's a really interesting but uh, highly coloured anti-pagan account of the uh, the biggest disaster to hit the Roman Empire since the Gauls sacked the city 800 years earlier. So, one of the great momentous events of history, and uh, in this video, let's uh, let's take a deeper look at how this chap describes the sack of the city. Erosius lived in the late fourth, early fifth century, and uh, therefore was alive during the the great barbarian invasions of that time and uh, the subsequent capture of the city by the Goths. He was actually a student of uh, St. Augustine and uh, wrote several books, but he's most famous for his work called Historiarum Adversum Paganos, or uh, Seven Books of History Against the Pagans. The books cover Rome since its foundation, but it's in the last book that he details the sack of the city. Uh, the books are actually quite short, more like chapters, and uh, the entire book or books can be read within a few hours. The only issue is that as the names of the books suggest, uh, this is a highly partisan account. Erosius wrote his history for the same reason as Augustine wrote City of God. And that was to counter pagan accusations that the, uh, the fall of Rome had been caused by the, the, the old gods deserting the cause of Rome, since much of the population had now been converted to Christianity and uh, had consequently stopped worshipping the, uh, the Greco-Roman deities. So he tries to show the disasters and catastrophes that had fallen on the Roman Empire after its conversion to Christianity were no worse than the ones which fell on Rome when the, uh, the empire was pagan. In other words, deserting the Roman gods had not affected the city's fortunes. His second reason is to minimise the impact of the capture and sack of the city, and uh, that was by pointing out that the, the invaders themselves were Christian. The Goths had been converted to Christianity during the, uh, the second half of the 4th century. So the fall of the city was uh, by no means a disaster since it was a Christian king conquering a, a Christian city. Erosius therefore tries in his narrative to uh, paint Alaric and the, uh, the Gothic conquest of the city in as uh, positive a way as possible to uh, minimise the damaging consequences of this attack. So we find in his books Alaric and his soldiers being shown as uh, almost uh, apologetic about uh, ransacking the city and uh, certainly showing restraint at uh, looting churches and uh, the various Christian relic relics in the city. Erosius doesn't document the general plundering of the city in much detail, unfortunately, as that would ruin the message of the books. So while his books are a history of the Roman Empire, they, they are in reality a, a, a diatribe against uh, what was left of the pagan population and uh, paganism by the, uh, the early 5th century. Nevertheless, the book is very important in that it gives us not only some details about the, the sacking, but uh, of the anti-pagan rhetoric that was uh, still strong at this time. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, Erosius starts off his description of the... Uh, the Gothic invasions of Italy from the year 401 AD, when uh, Alaric, followed by uh, another Gothic king, Radagasius, um, loot and plunder Italian cities. But uh, I'll leave that for another video and uh, I'll move straight on to uh, the year 410 AD. And that's when Erosius tells us of Alaric deciding to uh, lay siege to, uh, to Rome for the third time. Quote, Therefore, after this great increase of blasphemies, without any uh, evidence of repentance, the final long impending doom overtook the city. Alaric appeared before trembling Rome, laid siege, spread confusion and broke into the city. He first, however, gave orders that all those who had taken refuge in uh, sacred uh, places, uh, especially in the basilicas of the holy apostles Peter and Paul, should be permitted to remain inviolate and uh, unmolested. He allowed his men to devote themselves to plunder as much as they wished, for, uh, but he gave orders that they should refrain from bloodshed. So since Alaric was Christian, Erosius makes sure to mention the king telling his men to avoid looting the churches in the city and uh, anyone taking refuge there. His men were given free reign elsewhere, though plunder from any other buildings and homes was allowed. 
Interestingly, Erosius describes the Pope being out of the city at the time and uh, therefore avoiding the sack of the city. And uh, he interprets this as uh, some sort of divine intervention, although the, uh, the city and the, uh, uh, the Christian people had to go through the trauma for some reason or another. Quote, a further proof that the storming of the city was due to the wrath of God rather than to the bravery of the enemy is shown by the fact that the blessed innocent, the Bishop of Rome, who was uh, at that time uh, at Ravenna through the, uh, the hidden providence of God, even as Lot the just was uh, withdrawn from the Sodomites, did not witness the destruction of the sinful populace. Erosius then narrates uh, an interesting anecdote uh, to show the, the piousness of Alaric and his uh, Christian army. It's about one of his soldiers uh, entering a church in search of loot. Quote, while the barbarians were roaming through the city, one of the Goths, a powerful man and a Christian, chanced to find in a church building a virgin advanced in years who had uh, dedicated herself to God. When he respectfully asked her for gold and silver, she declared with the firmness of her faith that she had a large amount in her possession and that she would bring it forth at once. She did so. Observing that the barbarian was uh, astonished at the size, weight and beauty of the riches displayed, even though he did not know the nature of the vessels, the, the Virgin of Christ then said to him, These are the sacred plates of the Apostle Peter. Presume if you dare, you will have to answer for the deed. As for me, since I cannot protect them, I dare not keep them. So now Erosius shows uh, Alaric's apparent wish to keep the churches inviolate being kept. Erosius continues, Quote, the barbarian, stirred to religious awe through the fear of God and by the virgin's faith, sent word of the incident to Alaric. He ordered that all the vessels, just as they were, should be brought back immediately to the Basilica of the Apostle, and that the virgin also, together with all Christians who might join the procession, should be conducted there under escort. The building, it is said, was at a considerable distance from the sacred places, with uh, half the city lying between. Consequently, the gold and silver vessels were distributed, each to a different person. They were carried high above the head in plain sight to the wonder of all beholders. The pious procession was guarded by a double line of drawn swords. Romans and barbarians in concert raised a hymn to God in public. So it all ended up well with the church relics being looked after and even a hymn being sung in the middle of the, uh, the plundering and chaos in the city. And this was Erosius's way of uh, showing how civilised the, uh, the Christian Goths were in their uh, plundering of Rome and uh, how they ref refrained from the, uh, the various successes. How true this is, is uh, open to question, as uh, Erosius obviously has his own uh, Christian agenda. Well, what about the pagans in the city? Well, Erosius describes them as uh, seeming to convert to Christianity at this time, although it seems only due to the uh, exigencies of the time uh, rather than real belief. Quote, in the sacking of the city, the trumpet of salvation sounded far and wide and uh, smote the ears of all with its invitation, even those lying in hiding. From every quarter, the vessels of Christ mingled with the vessels of uh, Peter, and many pagans even joined the Christians in making a profession, though not in true faith. In this way, they escaped, but only for a time, that their confusion might afterwards be the greater. The more densely the Roman refugees flocked together, the more eagerly their barbarian protectors surrounded them. Then Erosius takes another shot at the pagans, comparing them to a chaff weeded out by a sieve. Quote, the celebration of this uh, mystery with its transferring of the vessels, its singing of hymns and its escorting of the people resembled, in my opinion, a huge sieve through which the congregation of the Roman people was uh, sifted like a great pile of grain. For through all the apertures of the uh, hiding places in the entire circuit of the city, the living kernels flowed forth. It was a question whether it was the occasion or, or the truth that stirred them. All who, have, however, that believed in the present salvation were received as if from the granary of the Lord's preparation. But the rest, like dung and straw, were left to be destroyed and burned, since either their unbelief or disobedience had already been judged. Who can ponder these things with sufficient wonder? Who can proclaim them with uh, befitting praise? So the sack of the city lasted for three days, and uh, Erosius, summing up, compares it favourably to uh, previous disasters, mentioning that the Goths found destroying some of the uh, important places around the city much more difficult than they thought. 
He also compares the uh, devastation favorably to the great fire of Nero's time. Quote, they had, it is true, burned a certain number of buildings, but even this fire was not so great as that which had been caused by accident in the 700th year of Rome. Indeed, if I review the conflagration produced during the spectacles of Nero, her own emperor, this later fire brought on by the anger of the conqueror will surely bear no comparison with the former, which was kindled by the wantonness of the princeps. Nor do I need a, in a comparison of this sort to mention the Gauls who, after burning and sacking the city, camped upon her ashes for almost an entire year. So Erosius finishes his description, again minimising the effect of this uh, momentous event and uh, attempts to make it look like the city had uh, completely recovered from, uh, from the sacking. Quote, although the memory of the event is still fresh, anyone who saw the numbers of the Romans themselves and uh, listened to their talk would think that nothing had happened, as they themselves admit, unless perhaps you were to uh, notice some charred ruins still remaining. And he goes on to mention Galla Placidia, the, uh, the sister of Honorius, the Western Roman emperor at the time, being uh, married to Atulf, the, uh, uh, the brother-in-law of Alaric, and uh, who later became the king of the Visigoths himself. He, uh, although after his death, she managed to uh, return to Rome and in fact married the, uh, the future emperor, Constantius III. So you have this situation where uh, Christian theologians like uh, Erosius and uh, St. Augustine were... Uh, in a way, almost making light of the situation uh, regarding the sack of the city, or uh, certainly looking at minimising the effect of the uh, the capture of the city, rather than siding with their fellow Roman pagans against the uh, external threat and uh, the extreme damage done to uh, uh, Roman prestige. Erosius's account is uh, therefore uh, an interesting narrative, although flawed by the uh, heavily Christian tilt given to the whole proceedings and the need to show from Erosius' point of view that uh, the sack of Rome wasn't really as uh, disastrous as it was. Alaric is shown as almost a, a decent chap, protecting the churches and their relics, as well as the, uh, the Christians hiding in them, with his uh, army doing the least amount of damage to the city. Nevertheless, it's a, it's a valuable account, as it is from that period, and uh, uh, by a Christian betraying the uh, the, the antagonism that the, uh, the Christians at that time harboured, even as paganism was dying. Rome would be sacked again pretty shortly afterwards in uh, 455 AD, and uh, that was by Gaius Seric and the army of the Vandals. But by then, all traces of paganism uh, had been pretty much suppressed by the, uh, the Christian authorities, and uh, there's no prominent account of pagans championing their cause during uh, this second sack of the city. Anyway, that's it for this video, and uh, if you like the video, do consider liking and uh, subscribing to the channel.